Hi, guys. I can see nothing. Well, that's not good. You better get your eyes checked out. <laughs> uh, ah, it. <laughs> I'm trying to get it up and running myself over here. Are you guys all right over there? What, what's going on back there? Echoes. Okay. All right. Uh, the, there. I turn off my YouTube video. Video volume. Yeah, I just killed the volume. I got it running up right now. Good. So it's a little behind. That's all right. It's not that bad, right? Nah. Yeah. There we go. I can see it now. All right. How's everybody doing? Good evening, everyone. It is Saturday, April... What the hell is the day today? April 18th. Wow. Time's flying. Um... I'm your gracious host, as always, Roadway Wiz. It's great to have you with us for tonight's presentation. Um, I'd like to introduce our panel that we have tonight joining us via Skype. Um, representing the great state of Wisconsin is Scott. Hello. And uh, making his debut on this uh, feature tonight, we're very happy to have him from California. Uh, Tom, how's it going? Hey, it's going. So... We are going to give you guys a rundown and a slideshow about the freeways of San Diego, which was one of the several large cities that I explored back in February. And uh, we'll give you guys an introduction to the, some of the backstory, the history, um, how these highways came to be in a lot of cases. And uh, we'll, in our typical fashion, we'll conclude with the second half of the program, which will be some video uh, footage and previews. I guess we'll wait a couple minutes to get started, because it is it's a little early. We'll let some people file in before we get going. But, uh, Tom, Tom, what part of California are you in? You're in uh, Sacramento, not Sacramento. Fresno. Fresno, that's what it is. Okay. That's one. That's one major city in California I haven't been to yet. Yeah, it's uh, it's one of the cities. If you didn't know there was five hundred thousand people living here, you wouldn't realize that just by looking at it. Isn't it the? It's the largest city not on the interstate system, I believe. Isn't that right? Uh, yeah, that's correct. Wow. Uh, I five is way off to the west of us. That's a whole interesting story. It was originally intended to come through here, um, but they ended up building it out west instead. Hope everybody's had a good weekend so far. Um, weather, weather up in here in, in New York has been rather conducive to staying home. Um, but tomorrow it's supposed to be a lot nicer, so... I'm sure the parks up by me will be flooded with people from down south trying to, you know, get out. You know. Well, actually, most of them are closed down. Uh, I think Yosemite was, like, the first one to, like, back in March. So pretty much we're stuck in, there's nothing to do with potentially 80 and 90 degree weather. Did they, uh, so they shut down all the parks and all that? Uh, mostly the national parks. Uh, some of them, like the Bureau of Land Management trails, are open, but they shut down anything developed, like campgrounds, um, you know, like the rest areas. So, like, unless you really, really, really know something kind of off grid, you kind of don't have many options. I see. All right. Well, I think. We got a good following here. We got a classroom full of people now, so uh, let's take off here. Um, San Diego. But first, some announcements. So, you have seen every week this little uh, drawing, right? This little sketch up that outlined back in the middle of March what I was going to be doing on a weekly basis with the channel um, every Saturday through this um, COVID-19 shutdown period. 
And as you can see, today is April 18th, and look where we are on the map. We're right here. Okay, so we've already taken care of I-17. We did the Vegas and El Paso webinars, which are up on the channel if you missed them and would like to go back and see them. I highly recommend that. And also, we managed to talk over each other for two hours while viewing the El Paso and Vegas beltways last week. So tonight's focus is San Diego. You can see what's coming down the line in the weeks ahead. We have two more virtual tour episodes coming up. One next week. The one next week I think is really going to be a lot of fun. And um, we still have two more major metropolitan areas to get into in depth after that for the month of May. So we still got a lot ahead of us, a lot of material to cover, and... Um, Looking forward to bringing it to you in the next few weeks. As far as YouTube uploads go, uh, we continue with the Las Vegas series, which began on April 10th, and that will be going for a few more weeks still. So, if you want to see Vegas highways on my channel, now's the time to uh, pay attention and uh, check them out. All right, so a little bit of an introduction to San Diego, which is one of the largest cities in California uh, with a population of 1.4 million. It's ranked number eight in the country as far as population. Um, I believe it's the it's second largest in California behind Los Angeles. I, I want to say that there are three cities in California with a million people, with San Jose being third, but someone can yell at me if I'm wrong about that. Oh, that's oh, right. Is that right? Okay. Which, by the way, I never would have guessed that San Jose was the one that had a million, but... You can only fit so many on San Francisco. Yeah. Uh, Starting to get some uh, uprise in San Francisco, but it's going to be a while before they hit a million. Yeah. Um, metro population, San Diego, is about 3.3 million as of a couple of years ago. Um, sometimes you'll hear it referred to as the birthplace of California. It was one of the first locales settled on the California coast back in the 1500s. One of the things you'll notice a lot if you visit San Diego is the presence of the U.S. Navy. There is a huge naval presence in San Diego Bay and in Coronado and the surrounding areas, which goes back to at least a hundred years, probably much farther than that. Um, so you will see a lot of uh, U.S. Navy themed attractions um, and historic sites and whatnot all around the San Diego region. And also for us road geeks, you might be interested to know that San Diego is the largest American city that does not have a U.S. route running through it. Now, that wasn't always the case. As we'll see, there were some U.S. highways that did crisscross the area at one time, but uh, that is not the case anymore. I'm sure we'll touch on that at some point. So we have the overall progression of the San Diego freeway system. Um, we got some maps that we'll show you here. Um, this is from roughly about the mid 60s. Uh, we can see, let me get out my little handy pen here. Uh, let's see, what do we want to highlight first? Well, we can see I 8 running across the top here. Notice how it does not yet extend out to Ocean Beach, that was extended later. We also have I-5 coming in from the south, passing through downtown, and as of the printing of this map, ending right here at I-8, although the extension to the north does not yet exist. That was built later. Also, we have the Cabrillo Freeway passing through Balboa Park and on out towards the north, and you'll notice, if you can see it on here, that is a US-395 sign. And as we'll see as we run through 
this evening it is no longer signed as US-395. Um, other landmarks here, we have San Diego Airport right here. Um, massive Naval Station in Coronado down here. And not yet a reality as of the printing of this map from the 1960s, but you will also, and it's just off screen to the bottom right, but the uh, Coronado Bridge crosses the bay down here, but that's not built until the 70s. Okay. And we have a more regional <laughs> view. Um, the map on the left has a lot more of the region's unbuilt freeways on it, and that actually just occurred to me about 20 minutes ago while I was getting ready for this presentation because I was looking for a, an easy way to draw some of these. Um, and I didn't realize that we actually have some of the dotted lines that, ever, that never actually became a reality. But one thing that we can do is we can show you basically, again, you'll see some U.S. highway signs right here. We got 101, 395, and 80. Uh, I'll get rid of those. Um, switch to highlighter. That's a little easier. So you can see, again, it, it might be a little hard to see the root numbers here, but we have 805 as a dotted line coming down through the inland suburbs. We have the 5, largely a solid line at this point, but there are a couple of dotted line areas here and there. And then US 80 is concurrent with I-8 along the uh, Mission Valley Freeway, the dotted line to Ocean Beach is visible here. Um, what else we got? I think this 103 is what became uh, I-15, I think. And then 395 again is signed on the Cabrillo Freeway, which is nowadays Highway 163. Yeah, the 103 and 395, that all became I-15. Um, who was, who was that? Was that Scott who just said that? I'm yes. Having, yeah. You're coming in a little fuzzy there, Scott. Um, but yeah, the, the 103, I think, became I-15 at some point. Yep. I think, um, Cabrillo, the Cabrillo Freeway was originally intended for I-15 to be extended downtown, I think. But I need to go back and reference that. Okay. And then a more recent map regionally is here in the lower right, where we have most of the freeway system built out in the San Diego area. Now it's um, expanding out into the east suburbs. 125 is still a dotted line in a few places, as is 905. And um, Highway 11 is also a dotted line at this point. <clears throat> And so here's the system that we have today. Um, I think it's fair to say that when you consider all the proposals and all, all the construction that took place, that San Diego basically built the large balance of its proposed freeways. Is that fair to say? That's pretty accurate, uh, especially compared to what you're seeing up in Los Angeles. It's got the majority of them. Uh, but n most of the ones in San Diego weren't as far flung as what you were seeing to the north. As far as the ones that didn't get built anyways. Okay. Um, so let's start running through some of these. And we'll start out with some honorable mentions. These are highways that I did cover back in February. But um, we won't spend a whole lot of time uh, going over them. Um... So we have highways 52, 56, 67 is a short spur, and 78 is up by Oceanside. Um, so if we could, let me get rid of that. If we could draw these in real quick, um, you can see 52 is up. 52 is up here north of town. Uh, 56 is also another 515 connector. 
Um, 78 is another one of these 515 connectors, but it's way off map to the north. And 67, the part of that that's a freeway is right in here. Okay, so these are all freeways that are well north or east of San Diego. They're in, they're serving suburban areas, so they're pretty busy as far as commuter highways go. Um, but we won't be spending a lot of time uh, talking about those, but you should at least be aware of them. Okay, so that's those four out of the way. All right, let's get into major league freeways here. The five freeway starts at the Mexican border at San Ysidro and runs north through downtown San Diego and forms the major corridor between San Diego and Los Angeles. Um, the border crossing at the south end of 5 is interesting because it's close to commercial vehicles. Uh, so you will only see passenger vehicles um, crossing at that location. Commercial vehicles and trucks are diverted to the border crossings further east. And we'll touch on more of those um, in a little bit. But, um, yeah, it, it, it does... It is kind of a hassle for commercial traffic if you're trying to get to Tijuana from the San Diego area. Um, the section of the five from the border on up through downtown San Diego is known as the Montgomery Freeway. Uh, John Montgomery was, I want to say he was an early aviator in Southern California. I believe that. I didn't double check that before we started. I probably should have done that. But uh, he has his own Wikipedia page, I believe. And I'm pretty sure he had something to do with um, early aviation in California. Man, my co hosts are quiet tonight. I don't know what's I'm going on. I'm looking it up on Wikipedia. <laughs> <laughs> I actually I pulled up uh, flyingmachines.org. Um, okay. He has several lines of uh, flights, uh, planes that he had modeled here. Um, basically, small looks like model airplanes or something warm pilot shots. Kind of like Wright Brothers doing their job. Okay. So I am right that he's in the aviation business. You are. Okay. Um... Yeah, so that section of 5 is known as the Montgomery Freeway. From San Diego on northward, it takes on the name San Diego Freeway. Um, and the San Diego Freeway name applies to 5 all the way up to Irvine at the El Toro Y, where it then veers west on the 405. So that whole stretch of interstate from north of Sepulveda Pass at the north end of 405 all the way down to San Diego has the same freeway name. One thing I find intriguing about the San Diego freeway is uh, the time that I, the you other know, couple times that I drove it, you can tell the speed of the prevailing traffic based on whether you're north or south of the San Diego County line. Oh, really? Yeah, I'd sure. No, not sure if that's true now, Tom, but uh, it had been back when I was there. It's pretty fast moving. I've kind of found through pretty much until you get to Camp Pendleton. Then it kind of becomes urbanized uh, once you're out of the military reservation. Yep. Uh, but usually the fastest way out of L.A. is taking 405 and sticking to 5, so kind of on that whole stick of having having it all be in the San Diego freeway. Um, it's pretty wide uh, up in the northern suburbs these days. I think it was at least six lanes until Camp Pendleton, if I recall correctly from last year. Yeah, I think it's I think it's eight the whole way up now, isn't it? It might be. I'm looking at my old photos I took last year. Yeah, I seem uh, to remember eight. <clears throat> But yeah, that, that drive from like Oceanside on up through San Clemente there, right on the ocean, that's a fabulous drive. Very nice one. 
yeah. in the old 101s, like off to the west of that, for the most part, you can't even access a large part of it. Hmm. All right. Well, we dealt with five, so let's deal with 805, which is an inland bypass of downtown San Diego and the five freeway. Uh, serving the inland suburbs to the east of town. One of the things that I really admire about the 805 in general is the very creative engineering solutions utilized to navigate some of the terrain that is crossed over the course of this highway. Um, you have significant valleys that have to be traversed. You have... Um, ridges and all sorts of geological challenges so a lot of the bridges actually on the 805 freeway when they were built won all sorts of you know design awards from the ASCE and all sorts of other um, uh, whatever you want to call it uh, societies uh, because there were just so many eye-popping things that had to be done in order to get this freeway through um, so it's definitely one of my favorites as a result of that. Um, particularly the Mission Valley Viaduct is one that comes to mind. Um, actually, you can, if you go to this slide, you can see it right off here in the back left, right at the I-8 interchange there. Um, a lot of stuff had to happen to get this freeway through, and it, it's really a technological marvel for the 60s and the 70s that they were able to get it in. Um, the freeway is named for this fellow, who I believe was a Caltrans superintendent for Southern California for a number of years. Yeah, he was involved with um, a lot of the freeway development in the San Diego area. Okay. Apparently, Caltrans District 11 from 1955 to 1980. Uh, and during his tenure, 95% of the freeway miles in San Diego that exist today were built. Wow, okay. So he's like the uh, Robert Moses of San Diego. Uh, apparently. I guess his name, nickname was Mr. Caltrans, which is kind of amusing considering he worked for the Division of Highways the bulk of his career. Yeah. All right. Um, 15. So, why don't we just tackle this elephant in the room right now, right off the bat, with this question. Is it I-15 or is it Route 15? Well, it depends on what section you're referring to, because in general the answer is yes. Both designations <laughs> apply here. Um, in spite of some erroneous signage that you might see down at the very south end of the freeway, or like a, a signage here on the lower right, um, the southernmost six miles of freeway are not technically part of the interstate system. The southern terminus of I-15 is currently at Interstate 8. But, um, Tom, do you want to get into a little more detail about the Highway 15, I-15 situation? So the, way Cal, so the way Caltrans and the legislature, or more specifically the legislature, how they look at routes in California, uh, there's no delineation between a state highway, U.S. route, and interstate. So basically in the view of the legislature, it's all Route 15. Uh, so I'm to understand from uh, Andy, you were talking about Andy earlier on, he actually asked the Caltrans director why have you guys pursued inter interstate designations of some of the routes that had been upgraded. Uh, and a lot of it recently has to do with the fact that they don't see a value, or at least that's what he was told. Um, and I guess it was a pretty directly, too. Um, but most of the signage, uh, and this might not necessarily be the case on California 15, uh, but on I-15, it's fairly old. A lot of button copy, a lot of paint it, background signs. Uh, so a lot of it's designed to stand out there for decades at a time as opposed to the vinyl stuff. Uh, but with California 15, you got some stuff that's substandard, like left exits. 
Uh, so it doesn't really meet interstate standards. Uh, so that's kind of a sticking point in getting anybody in the legislature, Caltrans interested, is usually pretty difficult uh, to pursue that interstate designation. It's kind of a similar issue to what you're seeing up there in uh, the Inland Empire area of I-210. Uh, part of it could be pursued, but it hasn't. That's the, uh, the I-210, California-210 difference? Correct. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because yeah. New York is kind of like that, too, in that they, you know, like if it's, you know, Interstate 87, for example, you'll hear it a lot yeah. of times referred to as Route 87. So, you know, California is not the only state to do weird things like that. Um, the one thing I would say is that if the only thing that's holding up uh, California 15 from being I-15 is left-hand exits, then, you know, some people ought to come and take a look at the things they're passing off as interstates within New York City. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a lot of even early <laughs> interstate system, basically, it didn't even meet what was required in the 50s. It kind of got a waiver, and it just doesn't seem like that's much of a thing anymore. Um, okay, so, the, oh, there's an echo. Um, so 15 mainly serves as a north-south highway connecting pretty much the downtown of San Diego with points east of Los Angeles, the Inland Empire, and if you continue north of there, you end up in Las Vegas. Um, a major project for to build HOV lanes along 15 north of San Diego was, I believe, built in the 80s. Um, correct me if I'm wrong on that, but it was converted to hot lanes recently. And this was done, I believe, within the last 10 years. So that's there is quite a buildup that I recall seeing in the Inland Empire area, um, but I really haven't been past uh, Temecula in 15, probably since 2012, but I believe that's correct. Okay. Um, most of it was done around 2012. That was completed by then. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, the, the f photo on the right here shows that stretch. Um as we head northbound towards Riverside, the HOV, HOT roadway is in the median. Um, also, I love this split here on the left with 163. We have an eight lane split. Um, four lanes for 15 south, four lanes for 163. Gotta love California freeways. The one thing about California freeways is that uh, all their signs are always the same height on, on the bridges. No deviations whatsoever. Is that something that's written into the, the spec or whatever? Or is that just something? That's that a spec. It is. Okay. Yep. Yeah, you're going to see a lot of weird variations in California um, between what you would see in the normal MUTCD. Uh, there are some differences. So that's why you see button copy so prevalent because it didn't really go away until the last two decades. And from what I see, the oh, California, I think, is the only one that has a state shield not on a black background. Hmm. Well... You win tonight's first prize. All right. Interstate 8. Mainly known as the Mission Valley Freeway, it runs east to the west, uh, north of um, downtown San Diego. The section west of I-5 is also referred to as the Ocean Beach Freeway. Uh, it is San Diego's lone east-west interstate. And San Diego is a city with many freeways that happen to run east-west, but this is the only one that is um, at interstate status. Um, there's quite a sequence on 8 as you pass through Mission Valley, where you have major interchanges with the 805, the 163, 
and the 15, all within like two miles of each other, or maybe even less than that. But that's a pretty impressive um, sequence there. Um, all major freeways, all, you know, these huge interchanges and whatnot, and they're all, you know, within a couple of miles uh, as you traverse uh, the 8 freeway. Yeah, and they're all, um, considering the geographic constraints, that makes it even more impressive, at least I think, because you're backed up the mountains and hills. Uh, and basically, that all had to be engineered through to even make that happen. <clears throat> Yeah, this is the same area that I was talking about earlier with the 805 uh, Mission Valley area. That you know, the, the whole general area here of Mission Valley was just this, you know, amazing feat of engineering to get all these freeways in in the first place. Um, given all the constraints, you know, with the terrain. <clears throat> um. Yeah, so it's a basically, it's an 8 to 10 lane corridor. Um, if you happen to be leaving town to the east, El Centro becomes the control city. Um, and you pick up an elevation quite quickly as you leave the metro area to the east. But we'll save all of that stuff for next week's presentation. You do have a little bit of an oddity with... Um Eight west of I-5, you got that little four-lane section that kind of angles off towards Point Loma. It's very different than the rest of the freeway. Yeah, the the section west of five was added later, right? Uh, yeah, that was actually uh, California two. Uh, sorry, California one hundred nine, and that got transferred to I-8 eventually. Yeah, was the. I guess the original plan was to just end eight at five, and then they decided to build an extension westward. To start. Yes, um, it looks like. So I'm reading my old notes. Uh, looks like the legislative route was adopted back in the '50s, so it kind of looked like they always had a plan for freeway out there. I uh, don't remember exactly what happened, but uh, eight ended at I-5 for quite a while until uh, 109 got annexed into i 8 route. Yeah, 1972 got added as a non-chargeable interstate. And that finally gives us the corridor that we have today. All right. So that's the interstates. So let's get into some state highways, shall we? Um, the Cabrillo Freeway... Nowadays, it's State Highway 163. As you saw on the old maps that we had, it, it was a part of US 395 a long time ago. Um, I think this would be a good time in the slideshow to give people a bit of a brief history of the US root system in San Diego and what happened to it. Um, who wants to take a stab at that? Uh, I, I will a little bit. Um, basically, you had 101, 80, and 395 were pretty much the big routes. Um, and 395 wasn't that one of the original ones. Originally, it was just US 80 and 101. Uh, there's a lot of conjecture and a lot of things that aren't really fully proven, like where US 80 was. Uh, US 80 might at one point gone to Point Loma, but I think the only evidence of that was... A Rand McNally map that only showed up for one year. Uh, the interesting thing about the Cabrillo Freeway is it's one very, very old, uh, but it also it carried both US 395 and US 80 into downtown for a while. Uh, US 101 would have came in on Pacific Highway and Harbor. Uh, and what's interesting about Pacific Highway is part of Pacific Highway, even though it's not even state maintained anymore, was a freeway grade. Yeah, because I, I believe this is the first section of freeway built in San Diego, the section through Balboa Park. That is correct. Yeah. Um, and then there's also the um, 
the bridge through Balboa Park, which you see in the upper left on this slide, um, that bridge has got to be 100 years old at least, right? 1815. It was built for the Panama California Exposition. It was built to celebrate the opening of the Panama Canal, which I guess they held in San Diego since it was the port of entry. Okay. Wow. Yeah, I, I, I know peripherally about Balboa Park because I drove through it for you know, documenting 163, but I didn't realize how, uh, how big it is. Um, yeah. It's basically the central park of San Diego, more or less. Yeah, most people would know it from uh, the San Diego Zoo, but that's actually a very small part of the park. Okay. <clears throat> so. So we mentioned there being east-west freeways that are not interstate standard or they're not signed as interstates. Well, here is one of them, the 94, which begins downtown and runs to the east. Um connecting to the east suburbs um from what i've been digging around recently it sounds like there are rumblings about an expansion project on this highway on the horizon but i don't know how immediate it might be it involves adding toll lanes everyone's favorite and um i don't know somebody can help me out with who martin luther king jr was because i have no idea <laughs> Somebody, somebody can take a stab at that one. I'm sure he was some guy who wasn't that important. Um, so, yeah, straightforward freeway here. You know, there's not really the a lot of the freeways in San Diego look very much the same. You know, that that certainly is the feeling I get. They all pretty much follow the same model as far as their design. Um, they're all in the eight lane-ish range as far as their width. Um, and the one thing that they share is, in, in a lot of cases, is really awesome views. So, you know, you can't really go wrong with uh, the views on some of these highways. They're spectacular. For an American city, you know, it's, it's impressive. Yeah, and it somehow manages not to look too utilitarian despite the era that they were built in, which is very different than what you're usually going to see with interstates or even freeways of that era. Yeah. Did we lose Scott? Oh, I'm here. I just keep it on mute so we don't echo. Oh, okay. I wasn't sure if you, like, went out to, like, protest stay home orders or something. <laughs> Me, no. No, you would never get in trouble like that. Um, 54 is next up. Um, again, another east-west corridor for the South Bay suburbs. And so now we're a little bit south of downtown. And again, this is another east-west highway. Um, this freeway took a bit longer to come to fruition, I believe... It was still in the process of transitioning between dotted line and reality well into the 80s. Um, and also there's this matter that we should mention real quick, which is the Sweetwater River Flood Channel. And that is the very west end of the freeway is actually split. The two roadways are apart from each other. One is to each side of this flood control channel um which you can see in this photo in the lower right you can see the the channel right here we're on the westbound lanes and the eastbound lanes are on the other side um i guess the yes. channel was already there when they built the freeway is that yeah i, be I believe it was built up uh quite a bit before that freeway was actually built uh, but it's kind of got a weird look to it um because it almost looks like something you'd see like on a levee road uh, as you're getting close to I-5. Yeah, it almost reminded me of what I would see in Louisiana when I was down there a couple yeah. years ago. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so that's a little interesting wrinkle there. Um, 
All right, so that's 54. Now, 125. Get out your toll tags, everyone. Um, the section south of 54 is currently a toll road known as the South Bay Expressway. Um, it's a very recent addition to the, uh, the highway system within the last 15 years or so. Um, Tom, the, uh, the agency that built this highway is no longer in existence, as I, as I believe. Is that right? I do believe that's correct. Uh, kind of looking through some of the notes on it. I think that's the case. It's like they built it and then they went bust. So somebody else had to come in and take ownership of it. I, I think that's kind of the gist of it. Yeah, there's actually uh, quite a bit of notes on the South Bay Expressway on California highways. Like, it's lengthy. Uh, something, something didn't go quite right. Yeah, here it is. South Bay Expressway Company files for bankruptcy dated 3-24-2010. Yeah. Um, yeah, so the, yeah. the South Bay Expressway section accepts fast track, and they also do toll by plate also. Yep. And you can also and still pay cash, which is interesting. that They give you the choice to toll by plate, but they're still accepting cash payments at the booth, which I, I find interesting. I'm not sure that there are many examples of that still out there. It's still fairly common, um, even in areas like the Bay, like San Francisco Bay. Um, seems like most of the agencies are trying to get away from it, um, but it's still a thing. I imagine this whole virus scare is going to be pushing towards going to cashless tolling completely. Yeah, the, the agencies in the New York area have shut off cash collection entirely. I don't know if yeah, they've I, done that. I believe they did. I believe they did in the Bay Area, but I'm not okay. too sure about San Diego or something like uh, 73 around uh, Long Beach. Yeah, but um, yeah, for the for the health concern aspect of it, yeah, they stopped all cash collection. Um, and I would think that they've ceased doing all that everywhere else, too. Um, I know in Houston, they they actually have waived tolls entirely on the, uh, the Harris County system. But um, that's the only example I'm aware of of an agency just waiving the tolls completely. But I think for the most part, by and large, they've stopped cash collection everywhere. <clears throat> Um, the 125 is, was the first toll road built in the San Diego area, and as of now, it is the only one. However, as we'll see in a couple of slides, we might have another one joining it at some point in the near future. Um, and again, the 125 is another inland north-south highway. It's located to the east of the 805, so it's the next highway out from downtown San Diego. Um... So it's, it's mainly serving the east suburbs and serving as a distributor to the east-west highways that get you downtown. Um, yeah, so in the lower right, we can see the toll plaza for the 125. Uh, this is located about a mile or two north of the 905 split near the border. Um, there's a single toll plaza and um, there are also, if you are exiting further north without passing through the mainline barrier, you'll pay tolls, you know, at ramp entries and exits and stuff like that also. So it's, it's set up like your traditional um, cash grab and toll road. So, of course, I had to drive it. All right, so while we're down this way, let's spend a few minutes on 905, which is another east-west highway that is mostly built to interstate standard, if it isn't fully built to interstate standard already. Um, this is a major freeway that 
as I mentioned before, this comes into play because the five freeway border crossing is closed to commercial vehicles, so they have to be diverted to the crossings further east. How do you get to those crossings? You follow the 905 freeway uh, in the vast majority of cases. So this is a major highway serving, you know, I don't know about mostly, but it, a great percentage of its traffic is commercial traffic heading for the border. Right at the Ote Mesa crossing. Yeah. Um, there, there was a road in this general area going back to the 1920s. It was known as the Ote Mesa Road. And over the course of 80 years or so, this dirt road has gradually worked its way up through the ranks to full freeway. And that's what we see today. Um... What's you might find something interesting, uh, Dan and Tom. The toll road, the toll road, the 125, doesn't exactly fully connect to 905 without having to go across the Ote Mesa Road. Yeah, it's a uh, surface level grade. It's pretty clear on most maps. Um, yeah, it's a very weird transition. They just never got the interchange completely going. There's like even a pilot. Right there, pilot and a flying J. Go figure. <laughs> yeah, that interchange with the 905 and the uh, the 11 and the 125 there is not fully complete in terms of there's not full freedom of movement between all those highways. But they actually are working on at least a couple of the ramps right now. Um, I believe the the ramps connecting 125 South to everything else are being built right now. So they are making some progress. Um, you can see it a little bit off in the distance here. Um, this picture is just as you make the U-turn at the border, which is this picture in the lower right. Um, and you start back west, one of the first exits you reach is the 125, and you can kind of see that they're building the, the piers for the next round of flyovers at that junction. Um, what is the status of the I-905 designation? I think, it's, I think it's one of those... I think that's actually the one Andy was referring to. Uh, I remember he was talking about... This is, I remember this post was on AA Rose. I think he actually asked about um, I-905 versus California 905. I think it's one of those things if Caltrans or the state legislature was able to pursue it or wanted to pursue it, they would actually get the designation. So it's just basically there's no push to do it. Yeah, because I'm under the impression that 905 has been interstate standard for a while now. It, it has. Okay. Um, I know west of I-5, that part probably will never get built because... Uh, it's just there's so much environmental concern uh, with that connector that was supposed to go to Federal Highway 1D. Uh, that might be part of it, um, but that's just speculative on my part. Okay. Um, hmm. um, we have a question in the chat here I want to address while we're here. Um, Road lighting in San Diego County being LPS, I don't know what that means. Uh, is that still the case? Um, Tom, do you know anything about lighting? Not much. Okay. Yeah, I'm not... All I'm going to say is define LPS. Because I know there had been, like, yellow fluorescent lights on I-8 that I saw near El Centro. Um back in 2013, but I don't know if they're still there or low pressure sodium. Thank you. Um, not yeah, you sure to, if they're still to, around. Yeah, you have to spell that out because I'm an idiot when it comes to lighting. So, yeah, I, I don't... I wasn't actually driving around San Diego at night, so I couldn't really tell you. Um... Because actually, during the, the two night times 
when I was in the area, I was actually up in Irvine. I wasn't down in San Diego. So by the time it was dark, I was well out of town. Um, okay, if, if I may, I just looked it up, and uh, yeah, exactly what uh, they were talking about in the chat here. The low pressure sodium is scattered about uh, was scattered around. Um, from what I saw in 2013, they look like fluorescent lights, but they aren't. Um, especially on the eastern suburbs, El Centro, for example, I saw them out there. Mm. Tubes, thank you. Yeah, come to think of it, like if you're way out there in the Imperial Valley, yeah, there's still some old, old, old stuff out that way. I remember seeing some stuff like that. Yeah, that was built up pretty quick out there, if I remember right. Uh, you got a lot of old, not just lights, but everything. Uh, old signage, um, old whips, the road, pretty much everything is kind of pretty archaic by today's standard in Imperial Valley. Yeah, but that's why road geeks like it so much. Yeah, it's, it's a nice road, especially when you dip below sea level and go, I think it's like 4,200 feet up, like in 15 miles. Yeah, right. Yeah, that, that's that's a fun drive. I'm glad I got to experience that in February. But I experienced that at night. Oh, I'll bet that's harrowing. I actually ran through that once in the snow. I was going to... I think it was Riverside to Yuma and ended up snowing up there. It was not what you'd expect. <laughs> well, we'll get to experience that drive next week. But um, while we're down here again, we mentioned 905, which is the border, the, the highway that gets commercial vehicles from the 5 and the 805 corridor to the Ote Mesa border crossing. Well, there's another border crossing that's in the process of taking shape still further east of Ote Mesa. And the 11 freeway corridor has been conceived as a connection between the 905 and this new border crossing that's to be built about a couple miles east of the 905 crossing. Um, this is an in-progress project. Um... The first phase of the 11 freeway has been open for a few years. It will be extended further east by another couple of miles to a new uh, commercial vehicle crossing at the Mexican border. And it is being openly discussed as a future toll road in order to, I presume, manage the number of vehicles that are passing through this border crossing. Um... At least that's the way it was being suggested in the sources that I was reading about tolling. It seemed to be a managed toll system. So we'll have to see how that plays out. But if that does happen, then this will become toll road number two in the San Diego metro area. Yeah, and it would be a pretty decent connector to 2D on the Mexican side. It would bypass a lot of the TOI area. Now, I'm not very familiar with the system of highways south of the border, but um, the, the highways that you're mentioning, Tom, these are major freeways, you know, by Mexican standard. Is that fair to say? Yeah, the D routes are uh, the autopistas. Basically, they're told, and they're, I wouldn't really call them interstate standard, but they're about as close as you're going to get. Um, they're I, farthest from. Um, they there's a lot of very tight interchanges, especially in the city, and it's not something that you want to drive on a daily basis. Yeah, and out, out in rural areas, you have a lot of at-grade intersections to, like, rural ranches. It's, it's almost like kind of how, like, um, I want to put it, like, I-10 might be, like, in western Texas, uh, just, like, the shoulders are narrower, like... Um, yeah, the, the interchanges are definitely not what you'd expect on interstate standards. Okay. Um, part of 2D way east uh, in Mexico is called Long, goes over La Rosa, and that is one of the most dangerous roads you could ever find in the area because people have 
tag, tried to take it too fast. If you take it too fast, you just basically were on a cliff and die. <laughs> Jeez. So it's like I ate. Yeah, and the, the, the thing is, though, like compared to the actual surface level federal highways, the D routes are usually a way better way to go. You got to go somewhere distance or want to at least have a somewhat safe drive. Um, so in this slide, we have the eastbound beginning of 11 at the 905 split. And we have the only exit on 11 as of right now. As soon as you get on the freeway, clear of the 905 split is uh, this exit here where all vehicles exit. And for now, the freeway ends at a stub. However, again, that is being addressed with this extension project that I believe is on the calendar for about five years from now when that would come online but you know we'll see what happens well it wouldn't be a roadway whiz slideshow without a bridge so I guess we better spend some time talking about this one so the Coronado Bridge um, spans the San Diego Bay just south of downtown uh, it links San Diego with Coronado and the island area. Um, it's a five-lane deck, so you have two lanes generally in each direction at all times, and then the fifth lane in the middle becomes reversible depending on the time of day or the day of the week in general. Um, the bridge was told from its completion on up through, I want to say, 2002. Um, and the toll, I believe, was only in one direction. Yeah, it was supposed to end in 1986 originally, but it went into the 2000s, 02, like you said. Like, the, the tolls were put in place originally to pay off the construction, is that? Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, so interestingly, the, the tolls haven't been charged on this bridge for close to 20 years, but the booths are still in place. So when you cross it, you'll go under the old toll plaza structure, but, um, there hasn't, there haven't been toll takers there in close to two decades. The interesting thing is that's where they have the barrier moving machine now. Uh, so you get a really good look at it, especially if you're going from I-5 South onto 75 in Coronado. Uh, you end up like right next to it. Yeah, we have we have some experience with the um, with barrier moving machines and stuff like that up in my part of the country. And uh, yeah, those things are pretty neat. Like the little articulated, they look like buses almost, but they. They send the barrier in one end and it spits it out the other end, about ten feet to one side. Yeah, and it, it's been quite a help since they've been doing that. Uh, I used to frequent seventy five before that was put in, and it was traffic jams. I mean, I'm not saying they're great now, but uh, they were an even bigger problem before that thing was put in. And uh, comments zipper machine. That's technically what I believe it's called. So it wasn't it zipper wasn't barrier. Always, yeah, it wasn't always a. Um, a reversible lane? Like, what was the original lane structure like? I believe it was just four lanes. Uh, and you had a pretty, you had a center, you had a concrete center divider, if I remember right, in the middle. Uh, and they also had, like, this weird thing where it was, like, a, it had a big suicide problem on that bridge for a long time. People would stop in the middle of the bridge. Uh, so it does have a barrier, if I remember, from last year, pretty much all across the structure now. Yeah, it's, it does have some sort of net that goes out from the from the, like the the barrier. Like I don't think it extends above the deck, but there's something that goes outward to I guess pe keep people from getting that idea. But um, yeah, so a lot of interesting little quirks about this bridge. Um, Probably the chief among them is the design of it itself because of its location and the constraints due to not only the Navy being grumpy about them putting a bridge here in the first place because, you know, we have naval installations to either side of this bridge. 
Um, also, the proximity to San Diego Airport. So, tall bridge towers were not possible at this location. Um, it required a low a low-hanging bridge that was yet tall enough to allow Navy ships to pass underneath, and so that's where we got the idea of a uh, steel box girder bridge that could span long, long enough distances without the need for tall bridge towers. And also, the other feature of this bridge that's interesting is that it takes on the shape of a, a letter J. Um, in this picture, you can see where it takes off on the right from Coronado. It actually takes off to the southeast and then makes a 90-degree bend over the bay to cross the channel at a right angle, uh, pointed more towards the northeast. And the reason for this is because they needed enough room to give the bridge enough space to reach its design elevation at the center of the main span. And they couldn't do that if they just took off straight from Coronado and followed the shortest distance possible. So a lot of what you see on the right here is extra bridge that had to be put in because they needed it to rise ultimately to its final elevation in the middle and they would not have had enough room to do that if they had just gone straight across. <clears throat> There's a lot of interesting stuff with this bridge as far as its design. Yeah, and that shipyard uh, for the Navy down there, that's unbelievably massive. So just like you said, the challenges with building that structure were quite something. Um, and considering how big Coronado is, North Island, for military personnel, uh, before all this, you were taking a ferry from downtown San Diego, and I couldn't imagine how impractical that was in the 1970s. Yeah, just much less now. now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. What's interesting about that is, though, I think it, if I remember right, uh, US ninety three ninety five would end at the ferry terminal in downtown. And you would end up on seventy five in Coronado when you land it. So it changed from one uh, highway to another. <clears throat> Um, I think we kind of sort of touched on this with the slide um, near the beginning when we were going through the progression of the San Diego freeway system. Um, most of the freeways that were planned ended up coming to life in real, in real life. Um, but I do want to touch on three of the more interesting ones real quick. We have designated as 157, 171, and 252. Um, and these are freeways that either would have connected more directly with downtown San Diego or they would have um, served as connectors to those highways that take you downtown. So if we have... Again, this is a map of the present day system, so... Let's break out the highlighter here. Let's let's color code this. Let's make 157 yellow. Let's do that and let's do that. I feel like I am uh, in a classroom trying to teach third graders math right now from home because everybody's teaching from home, right? Uh, let's see what color. I got? All right, I got this one. So. 252 South Crest Freeway. We do have some ramps that exist at the 805 Junction. This was meant to be a short connector on the north side of National City to connect 805 with the 515 Junction just southeast of San Diego. Uh, or the downtown of San Diego. Uh, 171 was, and if I'm doing any of these wrong, please interrupt me. Um, again, we have ramps down here that were built with the freeway in mind. It would have gone straight through Bar Balboa Park and ended up somewhere over here at the 805. Again, another downtown um, freeway to link up with the suburbs to the north and east. And the 157 
I've read a couple different iterations. One of them, I'll draw you the one that makes the most sense to me, but it would basically be a continuation of the South Crest, and it would have gone something like this off to the east. There's also another idea if you want to consider this one also that kind of starts further up like this before coming down. So either way you want to look at that, that's your 157. Um, the, only, the two that had actually anything at all built of them were the 252 with the ramps off of 805 and also the the 171 with the ramps off of the 5 right at the south end of Balboa Park. Um, what do you think? Did I miss anything? No, that's accurate. Uh, I'm looking at the planning map from 1970 on 157. That's pretty much spot on. Uh, and the other one's like, uh, yeah, nobody was going to be happy with the freeway going through Balboa Park again. How close would have gotten that gotten to the zoo? Mm, look at that map of it. I think it would have gone right past the zoo, right? Yeah, looks like it. Um, might have even went on the zoo property. No, on the map I'm looking at, it looks like it almost goes like directly north. West, and sorry, northeast towards the junction of 805 and 15. This is off the 88 state highway map, so an earlier version of it could have been much more into the park. So, like, all right, so that's this version. This might have been an earlier iteration, so what if... So you're saying there's something... Wait, let me change the color. Um, there's something more going off like this. Uh, no, went down looks like the junction of 15 and 805 15, is where the 88 map shows it. 15 and 805, yeah, isn't that... Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I can see why they would want to do more of a direct connect with 15 with that. That makes sense. Yeah, then looking at the older maps... Um, yeah, 103 did become 15. It looks like it changed somewhere in the 70s. So that looks like that corridor just became more important as time went on. Yeah. All right. I think that tackles that, right? Um, all right, here's my... Opportunity to ask you guys for questions, comments, stuff like that. I think we basically gave you everything you uh, needed to know and just a little bit more. So, uh, fire away. Um, this is a nice view of the downtown of San Diego viewed from Coronado. And... Coincidentally, that's the old ferry landing, too. For seventy five and three ninety five. Yeah, I was. I saw that in your uh, your article on Gribble Nation. That that that's actually because I saw that same exact spot that you were you had the pictures of, and um, interestingly, I was wondering at the same time. Like, I wonder where the ferry came in. Well, I didn't know it at the time, but I was standing <laughs> right where it did. So. Yeah, I didn't know it either when I uh, took my original photos back. I think it was in 2010. Um, I think they got the pedestrian ferry there still, uh, but it's kind of like off to the east a little bit of where the car ferry was. It's like it was right off the end of Orange, if I recall correctly. Uh, how much time did I spend in San Diego? Um, let me see. One full day of filming... And I, I think I basically, like, if you add up all the hours, I was there for about two days. Which is a shame, because, like, the weather was beautiful. Um, it's a beautiful city. And um, I wish I had more time to spend there. But um, 
I was basically there long enough to get all the highway coverage done, and then um, I basically moved on to my next destination. But uh, would love to go back there at some point. That's a fabulous place. Um, also, a quick reminder about next week's presentation. It is already locked and loaded and ready to go. So we're going to show you some of Interstate 8 across, we're going to show you all of Interstate 8 across the state of California. Um, for that reason, as we transition into the, um, the video portion of tonight's proceedings, you will not get any uh, I-8 video footage tonight. That is being reserved for next week because I gotta give you something different to look at every week. So that's, that's how we're gonna roll here, all right? All right, enough talk. These are all the videos. Well, these are just, I picked out these few that I think are relevant for tonight. Um, uh, you could do this from your house. That killed the sound. Um, so yeah, the San Diego video series is quite extensive. Again, it covers all the freeway mileage in San Diego County, so. Um, you can expect that all this stuff will start appearing on YouTube, I would think, sometime in the summer, although I haven't made a decision yet as far as, um, as, far as that's concerned. But uh, we're going to watch some footage here for a little while here. These are all videos filmed in the middle of February, which, by the way, guys, like, doesn't the middle of February feel like years ago now? Is that just me? Yeah, I do. Ours feels like forever ago. That's the last time I actually took a decent road trip somewhere, and now it feels like it was like in 2018. <laughs> yeah, it's like I don't I haven't even left town this month, so it just feels bored. I know. It the end. To answer Shondor's question, it started right at the junction of 163 and 15 in the Miramar area. Yeah, this video encompasses the entire length of the 163 freeway. So 163 begins at the north end at 15, and it, in a short amount of time here, we'll end up right at downtown. Um... I don't know. What do you guys want to talk about? This has the 10 lanes here, or is that an auxiliary lane? That's an auxiliary lane. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it has the typical four lane one way. I don't know. Did you ever listen to any traffic reports while you were out there, Dan? Yes. Um... I always noticed. I always notice how they always call the leftmost lane the number one lane or the number two lane, especially like in Los Los Angeles. It's a I don't know what they, thing. Yep. Yeah, they they do it statewide. Um, even in Fresno, like they talk about that. They'll have like some CHP guy come on the local news and they'll talk about like oh there's a uh, obstruction, the number one lane. You know, everyone used the two the two lane. It, yeah, like so. That's just a, a CHP thing. They just is there any is there any reason for that that you know of? Uh, I, not really. I always kind of chalked it up to it was one of those California things. Like uh, I'm not originally from here, so a lot of the slang doesn't really add up with like what I'd see in the Midwest, Florida, Phoenix, any of those areas. It's kind of just unique to here. There's a lot of things I feel about California that does make it unique from the rest of the 50 states. Um, when you cross over from the Vegas side of the border to California, you can tell a difference in the uh, landscape from one side to the other. That's just one example. <clears throat> well, you know you're entering California because you have an agricultural checkpoint. They used to have a yeah. list where you could get into the state where you didn't have to go through one of those. 
Um, there's some really remote areas like in the Mojave Preserve that don't have them. It's mainly uh, just major roadways like the interstates. Uh, California 62 has one of them. Uh, I don't think a lot of them along the eastern Sierras have them just because you're going to get so far into the state anyways. What's the point of manning it? Uh, US 395 has one, but I don't think even US 6 had one, but I could be wrong about that. The uh, inspector station on 15 was located further inland, way past by Ural. Yes, um, and, and the, trick, the trick was to get by that station because it always had a backup. Is mm -hmm. to you get off on Yermel Road and you just drive right by it. But now they moved it to closer to the state line. Yeah, and they never used it when I was uh, cross, crossing through there in 2013 either. There was also a station on five, the five between L.A., or more like Oceanside and uh, San Vicente, but I think that became more of an uh, inspection station for the customs. That's Border Patrol. I-8 has a couple of them, too. One each way. Yeah. Um, I think it's their jurisdictions within 100 miles of the U.S. border, so even in Arizona... Uh, the Border Patrol checkpoints are pretty common. There was a big one just west of Las Cruces on I-10. And then there was one past El Paso if you're heading east towards Van Horn on I-10. I uh, don't think there's any on the state highways. There might be one on 94, but it's been quite a while since I've been out that way. There are several. Um, I know this is off topic, but the state highways near Bisbee or actually north of Tombstone and Sierra Vista, there are a bunch in Arizona on the state highways. Yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah, kind of on that rural part of the state because you got a lot of larger towns like Duglas, uh, what is it, little town on, uh, oh, Nogales. Yeah, Nogales, that whole area. Uh, so it's kind of where they were. Mainly concerned with a lot of drug traffic in that area. Uh, you had a lot of people coming up through Ironwood, uh, Forest National Monuments, so kind of through a lot of the tribal land. Uh, they would kind of go up on Arizona 85 and kind of take the long way to I-10 on foot. The Border Patrol got there quite a bit. But yeah, on the uh, California side... Um what are there, four border crossings in Mexico, um, San Ysidro, um, forgive me for pronouncing that wrong, Ote Mesa, Catehaque, and uh, Los Algodones. Oh, and no, Calexico, that's five, actually. My, my mistake. Yeah. Just one closer that goes to, to Mexi Mexicali. Yeah. Um... You got Cate, California 188. I'm trying to think of what the one is closer to Yuma. Los Algodones. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, that, on the subject of Border Patrol checkpoints, I, I did pass through a couple of them um, in the area of the Salton Sea, like on 111 and on 86 they have them. Oh, those are new then, because those weren't there when I was working in the area around uh, 2011, 2013. Yeah, me too. Oh, uh, wow. Yeah, because I, I thought those were pretty far inland for Border Patrol. So, and, uh, yeah, that, that's what I was saying. If you want to know how inland they go, they uh, have one on US-70 on the White Sands National Monument area. Yeah, in, yeah, right there past the missile range. Jeez. That's how far inland they go. Yeah, apparently their jurisdiction is 100 miles from the border that they could put up a patrol station or a checkpoint station. So now we're going through Balboa Park, and um, you'll notice the, uh, the overpasses take on a much more... Uh, decorative feel to them you'll also see the uh the cabrillo bridge fly over in a little in a short distance from now coming up on the five yeah yeah right at the south end of the park is downtown there's the bridge <clears throat> The 
Ooh, there it is. So there's a split for the five, and this is another impressive stack interchange. Um, it almost looks like there's some sort of stub bet stuff going on here with how we switch pavement and all that. Is there anything to that? Uh, I think there's an abandoned stub there, yeah. I think you can see it from the San Diego Zoo, if I remember right. Um, one of the enclosures, like you can get like a direct over the top look at it. I forget which one it is, but I know it's in the south part of the zoo. Yeah, because what would that have been for? That might have been for... Um, maybe that was part of 171, I'm not sure. Hmm. Well, this view is pretty cool when you just basically just exit suddenly into downtown. You really don't get any indication of it from the freeway that you're going to end up in downtown like that. It just kind of just suddenly appears. Yeah, yeah. No freeway ends signed. I think probably my favorite example of a downtown appearing out of nowhere is uh, Pittsburgh. Yeah, that's a pretty nice one. Right coming out of the Fort Pitt Tunnel. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that one, and there are a couple other examples of that, too. Um, coming through the Liberty Tunnel, coming through um, from the north on 279. Um, yeah, there's, like, all the highways that head towards the center of the city, they all have these big, sudden reveals of the skyline, and it's really quite amazing. And if you can't tell, yes, Pittsburgh is one of my favorite cities. I, I think it's fascinating. Yeah, it's one of the few East Coast cities that kind of had similar geological constraints that you would see on the West Coast. Well, yeah, I mean, Pittsburgh, you've got the rivers, you've got the mountains, and they're all right next to each other, and somehow a major metropolitan area was stuck in all that so it's quite uh, quite neat to see how they were able to do that <clears throat> uh, what highway are we on right now are we on 94 I don't even know what video I clicked on I think this is 94 um, 94 westbound again this is another freeway that had enters downtown uh, directly, we're now approaching it from the east, as opposed to on 163, where we were approaching it from the north. Uh, 194 is a classic case of uh, the substandard interchanges that kept 15 from being interstate. At that point, uh, has that really tight cl cloverleaf ramp? Yeah, I think there are some left-hand exits and entrances at that junction that we're going to pass um which again i kind of chuckle at because i was just on the bqe today and you know if you guys want to call that interstate standard i want to have a word with you <laughs> it's not even close <laughs> yeah so i think it's kind of cute that people in san diego are complaining that an interchange is not quite standard I was on the BQE before they replaced that bridge, and it's like, I don't like it. Oh, the uh, the K bridge? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, like, I, I never really had much experience with it until I was able to drive. But um, every time I drove that old bridge, it, it, I always thought that my car was going to go straight through the deck. And somehow I live to tell about it every time. Suicide bridge. Yeah, kind of. The old Tap and Z bridge had holes in the deck too. That um, was pretty rough. Yeah. I mean, all these. I, that, I, that was one bridge I was scared to cross, I guess, too. So. Yeah. Yeah. New After York, hearing all the news about it falling up, being su sub sand insufficient. 
Yeah, New York After had quite the a Minneapolis few of Bridge fell. Yeah, yeah, that's another one. So yeah. looking at the comments uh, about Route 94 being added to the state highway system in 1933. So before 1964, uh, all the signed state routes and U.S. routes would have like a secret legislative route number. Um, but what's interesting about 1933 is that was the first year the legislature definitively said that the Division of Highways can maintain roads in cities. So before that, you basically had the auto clubs agree, making agreements with the cities to sign the highways, like the U.S. routes, some of the, and even some of the early state routes before they were state-maintained. Um, basically, it was just you, the Division of Highways would contract out to you know, like the auto club, automobile club of Southern California to put up signs wherever they thought the most practical route was until they could build something. Here comes one of those left exits on Route 15. Yeah. I love the giant sign on the left for 25 miles an hour. Now you can kind of see why. That's like a freaking hairpin right there. It's fine. Put an interstate sign on it. Yeah. Is California still skippy about uh, putting construction signs up in their zones and just lane shift warnings? Usually it's a free-for-all. You just get a orange construction warning and it doesn't even lower the speed limit most of the time. So, like, on uh, 99 in my area, that's usually how it goes. They might close a lane, but it's usually just a complete free-for-all. And I noticed that because they were doing the uh, new lanes on the 5 north of the uh, Newhall Pass. It was just oh, basically... Yeah, that was weird. Like, uh, they were splitting traffic and everything and expecting everybody to go 55 miles an hour. I was like, that's not happening. Uh-uh. <laughs> I was... Uh, on the number one lane, to say the least, and saw one truck just basically mount the median barrier right in front of me. Yeah, in uh, Bakersfield, they're doing that right now in 99. Uh, they got this, the one lane, the left lane, all the way kind of out there. You got a Jersey barrier on both sides, and that's the way you're supposed to get through downtown while they're finishing the ramps of 58, uh, just to get through there if you're going is through traffic. Uh it's a complete disaster. <laughs> Speaking of downtown reveals. Yeah, that's a pretty nice one. Yeah, this was a nice one. So that's the 94 approach. Let's... Because I couldn't remember. Did I click on 94 or 54? But I clicked on 94 before, so let's click on 54 this time. Um, you... Yeah. So the 125 toll road begins right where this video starts and heads south, but we're going to turn to the west and head back towards the 5. <clears throat> this freeway does not go directly downtown. It, it ends at the 5 a couple miles shy of downtown. Notice something missing about this freeway? Um, CHP uh, officers? No, what? The fourth lane. Oh, uh, well. That's true. I'm sure the shoulder will get used for that eventually. Yeah, that, that's some nice wide open space there. That way you could put some more lanes at some point. Probably be a toll lane too, an express lane. It's the, the big thing they're doing on a lot of the freeways in this state right now. Yeah, the uh, the hot lane phenomenon appears to be a, a nationwide obsession at this point. Yeah, like uh, I six eighty up in uh, the Bay Area. That's the the big new thing is getting those toll lanes in there. Yeah, yeah, look at all that real estate on there. That could be a lane. Yeah, right. Could fit another six lanes right in the median, probably. 
but yeah, the the 680 project, I I got to check that out last year, and that um, I think that project is still ongoing, and I think on aren't they adding lanes on uh, 880 as well? I think so. Yeah, no, they are. I drove that a couple months ago. Yeah, they are, and uh, looked like they're almost finished to I two thirty eight. I'm sure that would get some comments that particular freeway, but yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> as ever brought up that one um but yeah they're almost done to it38 well you mentioned it so i'm gonna jump on that and run with it um what's you know i i think that we kind of have heard the story of the designation and why it exists but can you explain like what the reasoning for that decision is so going back to what I was saying about the legislature not viewing, um, you know, U.S. routes, state highways, and interstates as anything different. They're just routes. Um, so at the time, there wasn't really any numbers available aside 180. And California 180, if you guys don't know, uh, is actually a major highway and freeway in the Fresno area. So that got some pushback. So this is kind of where you get the I-238 from. Originally, that was California 238, and California 238 still exists. But in the eyes of the legislature, even though part of it's an interstate grade, they view it as just the singular route. So if the legislature doesn't mean any difference what shape of shield's on there, but that's where you get that bizarre number from. Now, since then, uh, I mean, there's been talk about building another bridge, which I, I can't ever see that happening across San Francisco Bay, which would open up the possibility of I-380, uh, the Embarcadero Freeway is long gone, so 480 is available. Uh, but but kind of going back to, like, things usually don't happen in California unless there's a push for the legislature to do something. So, like, unless people start running to their you know, a local guy in the legislature is saying, hey, this I-238, this has got to stop. Is ever going to happen with it? Most people really don't care. They just yeah. drive it. Yes. Uh, most people probably would never even know that was like a complete numbering violation or how weird and unique it is. You go back to the HOT lanes, it's like, I kind of remember about, um, and still obviously exists, but uh, there's not that many uh, HOV lanes that I have seen in San Diego, but they're all over the Bay Area in Los Angeles, and the ones in Los Angeles are 24-7. Yeah, um, those are 24-7. If you, know, you want to bring the conversation to Nevada real quick, those HOVs are 24-7 enforced. Yep. Which I don't really understand that, but, you know. That is I can understand for Los Angeles because of the traffic being pretty busy around the clock. The almost, the only, ch the only uh, best time, the best times to drive a freeway in California are between 11 and 4 at night. Yeah. I believe that. Yeah, I got lucky uh, last year. Uh, I was going to San Diego, and I kind of timed it perfectly. I hit um, Los Angeles like at 9.30 in the morning, and I took I-405, took the San Diego freeway to get around L.A. I've never made it before, made it through I-405 once. A dozen and dozen times I've driven it without hitting a major traffic jam. That was the only time I've never hit a tra only time I haven't hit a, a traffic jam. Uh, it was like a freak thing, middle of the week. Uh, I got down to 30 miles an hour around Sepulveda Pass, but never stopped. I don't think I'll ever see that again unless I drive it like in once unless I drive it like right now. Yeah, right. I was on the 405 just uh, south of Santa Monica, Monica Boulevard, and it was going at a good clip. Um, and then I found road debris had just been placed there by uh, a traffic accident, and everybody was just trying to get around it. And that basically was the start of a traffic jam. I was at the front end of it, got lucky. Yeah, my, uh, this is a video of the 125 toll road, by the way. Um, 
here you can see those the the ramp that they're building right now. Uh, this is these are the piers for the uh, South 125 to Eastbound 11 flyover. Um, yeah, as far as the clinching the 405 is concerned, my experience of it, I got through Southbound uh, easily. It was a Sunday morning of President's Day weekend. Um, northbound, I got pretty much the whole way unscathed. There was a very, um, again, similar to what Scott was saying about a, a backup right at the front. Yeah, I got I got there right as something had just happened. So right, you know, right before the ten freeway northbound. But other than that, I I got through both ways just fine. Um, on the five freeway, I got through both ways fine. Um, that was basically it. Also, I also got to accomplish the one ten through downtown. But I am getting a little ahead of myself because we're still a couple weeks away from that. Uh, cluster, but we'll deal with that when it comes time comes time to talk about LA freeways. Um, there's the toll plaza. You got a toll by plate here. Yep. Yeah, my Arizona rental car did not have a fast track, so I wasn't paying that way. <clears throat> That's also a reason why I didn't drive the 15 express lanes on this trip, because I believe those are fast track only. Uh, yeah, a lot of a lot of these uh, toll lanes are fast track only. I know that most of the Bay Area is. Right. Yeah, but my uh, Bay Area rental car from 2019 had uh, the fast track on it so I was able to have all the fun I wanted on those roads but um, I would probably get yelled at and get a violation if I drove the 15 lanes without a tag I don't know how they do that but um, I would assume that's how it works yeah I got a toll violation on the Carnicles bridge because my wife forgot to bring cash and we don't do an easy pass because we live in Fresno it was pretty nominal Well, you can see that we basically have the road to ourselves at this point. Um, Nobody wants to pay the toll. Uh, well, I wanted to, just so I could clinch this thing. Is that a biker? <laughs> yeah, so the this road is interesting in that it doesn't explicitly ban cyclists and pedestrians, uh, unlike other freeways in the area. I don't know if that's a 125 toll road thing or if there's something more um, behind that. But yeah, they. That's, that's pretty unique. Usually they got something that says not non motorized traffic prohibited, uh, limited access grades. Yeah, and I think we just passed a guy about to take a whiz, too. So they allow all sorts of pedestrian traffic on this highway. Speaking of which. <laughs> His uh, Cavalier broke down. He was going to be there for a while. Uh, yeah, there you go. Roadway losing. Yeah, I was reading about the, uh, the history of this highway a little bit, and I guess the toll rates were so high when it opened that practically nobody was using it at all. And um, this level of traffic is actually a significant uptick from what it used to be. So if you think it's empty right now, when it opened, it, there was probably just... Um, you could probably break out a game of football in the middle of the roadway and it wouldn't cause much of an issue. It, it used to be very empty. I had to take it a couple times on work trips and I don't even remember this volume of cars on it. It could still break open a game of football here as a wide median. That is true. Yeah. You know, instead of, you know, 
could have the uh, the San Diego Chargers come back and have them play in the 125 median. It probably would work. Yeah. Well, I should point it out. San Diego had a crowd. Yes. LA originally. I gotta imagine they're gonna expand this thing though. With how wide that is eventually. Well, they definitely built it wide enough to add a lot more uh, blacktop at some point. Because we were on a three-lane section briefly, and now we're down to two. But I, I would think that they've got they've got a uh, a plan long range to add more lanes through here. <laughs> That's funny, Doug. The Chargers would get more fans in the 125 median than they do in L.A. You know, you're probably right. All things considering, if they're playing NFL without fans, that'd probably be a good place for it. Yeah, right? That'd be a good yeah. gimmick, actually. Yeah, they can send them back to Arizona like they did one year for the Wildfires. They are playing in Sun Devil Stadium. Uh, I remember the game was, I think I went to the game because it was free. Oh, wasn't that the year when, um, like, the first game back in San Diego, that was the Arnold Schwarzenegger Go Chargers Go? I game? think it was. Yeah, that was that year? Yeah, they had that uh, really bad wildfire. Uh, I remember that somebody I worked with was a huge Chargers fan, and he wanted really to go to that game, and he ended up not going, and I did for some reason. Where was that fire? I don't. I don't remember. It was pretty close to Qualcomm. Uh, it was like right on top of it. I think they canceled a couple, or at least moved or delayed some Padres games too. But that would have been like a downtown, so it was bad. Uh, but then again, like all the stuff we've had in the last couple years with fires, probably would overshadow that significantly in retrospect. Hmm. You always notice how you keep exiting and entering Chula Vista. Are we, like, right straddling the city line going up this way? I, I would imagine. I would imagine so. Um, city municipal lines tend to have weird um, drawings and like that. So it's kind of doesn't surprise me these days. Radar enforced. Yeah, I was wondering what that was. It, it's not for tolls. I guess that's a... A gantry that you passed under? Yeah. I think that is tolls. Yeah. It, never heard of photo radar on any state highway in California. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, you're fine. Tenure mine is what they call it. CHP. Looking at the yeah. comments. <laughs> And they're not, they're not pulling you over for speeding unless you're doing over 10 over. Oh, trust me, Tom. I was uh, back in 97 when I was in L.A. I was going with the flow of traffic. The traffic was going about 95. Yeah. And that was on the 10 east of downtown. <laughs> yeah, 90, uh, 99 on the, up here in the Central Valley. That's the one that really gets going fast between Bakersfield and uh, Fresno. Uh, there's a couple times you'll hit 100 if you're in the left lane if you want to keep up with anybody. Jeez. Wow. All right, so the toll road transitions to the uh, freeway section at this point. Um And that, that brings this section of 125 and this video to an end. So, on the left, merging in, the three lanes there are the 54 freeway, which curves north at this point. And then we'll split again to the... Well, the 54 ends there as a freeway, but it continues as a surface road to the east. Um, all right. Next... I showed you 125, which starts down near the Mexican border, so I'll show you 905. And um, just take a second to admire the begin 905 East assembly. Um, 
So the 905 is the east-west highway connecting the 5 and the 805 with the border crossings and the 125 freeway. Um, a few folks in the live chat. Well, I got a couple things for you guys. Um, if you're enjoying this presentation, this webinar, and you are not incredibly bored to tears yet, and you are uh, enjoying myself and Scott and Tom kind of taking you through the San Diego metro area, give this video a like. Um, it'll help you better be able to bookmark this in case you want to watch it again, and it'll let us know how you and the audience in general is enjoying this series of videos that we're doing. We're always striving to improve. That doesn't mean that we do improve, but we are striving to improve. And um, as far as the present time, if you guys have questions for myself or the panel as far as um, the San Diego metro area, stuff you want us to discuss, questions you might have about what you're seeing on the video, feel free to drop us a line and um, we'll do the best we can to answer for you. Guys, anything uh, you want to bring up at this point? I think at some point this was supposed to be a toll road, but I think they not sure if they gave up on that idea. I was asking a panel uh, question from the chat. Oh, is that a chat question? Yeah. Um, someone asked, uh, is this uh, supposed to be a toll road at some point, or is that just the future California 11? Um, what I read was limited just to the 11. It was not meant to also encompass the 905. Because I believe the 905 border crossing is going to stay as is. Like, they're not going to close that one. Um, the toll aspect oh, of, of 11, oh, I believe, is in place, again, as a mechanism to limit the amount of traffic that's crossing there. Um, again, you know, it's kind of like... HOT lanes for commercial vehicles, kind of. It's like a management system. So depending yeah. on how busy the crossing is, the toll would, you know, rise or fall, you know, depending. So that, at least that's the gist that I'm getting from it. Yeah, and it would be probably beneficial to have that mostly with commercial truckers who could pay the toll, and given that would bypass most of uh, Tijuana. One thing I think I read, but I forgot at this point, is where the actual, how the revenue would actually be split between the countries. Um, I feel like there was an article I read that mentioned that, but now I forget how that would work. I don't think it's as simple as a 50-50 split. But, you know, all these international agreements, you know, with, you know, trade and uh, border crossings and all that, you know, there's some pretty weird language in some of these agreements. So um, I wouldn't be surprised if we had something equally strange come out as far as how the 11 is going to operate, who's going to operate the 11, and what the toll rates are going to be on the 11 when it's done. What I thought was weird about uh, the current 11 was it was recycled um, from the Harbor Freeway, which it was actually co-signed with US-6 for most of its existence. And the same thing has happened with 7. That's actually on its third iteration right now. Yeah, is there any reason why they chose 11 for this? It seems to be like a random number for a for my hat. Um, so, like when they they first did the signed state routes in 1934, there actually was kind of like a grid to them. 
Uh, like north south would be odd, east west would be even. Uh, they would kind of group the numbers together. So, like in the LA area, you'd have three, seven, nine, fifteen. Oh no, nine is Bay Area. Um, Eleven, kind of all in that one area. Then you would do like the Central Valley had 180, 168, um, 198, 190. Uh, so there was an actual rhyme to reason to it and it basically kind of fell apart as the system expanded and it just completely fell on its face when they did the 1964 renumbering because you had to assign a bunch of state route numbers to state highways that didn't have one so from that point um it seems like they just kind of take whatever numbers available and just stick it on whatever new state routes they're making so whatever system they had in place quickly went by the wayside. And I would assume you still can see uh, remnants of that. You can, uh, especially up in my area with the three-digit uh, 100 range numbers. They're pretty intact. Um, but like a good example, one that you can kind of still see, like kind of from Stockton, you got 4, 88 was 8, and then you have 12, 16, 20. 24 was there for a while, uh, 28 was in the area for a while, 32, 36. And they go north, they ascend northward. Hmm. Yeah, so like uh, somebody in the comments talking about 7, uh, the second 7 would ended up being I-710. Uh, the first 7 ended up being I-405. Uh, 14 and US 395. Hmm. Yeah, you know, I had no idea there was this much history behind the California state highway system, but I'm glad somebody asked. Yeah, then uh, that's seven that just got referred to in the comments. That's the third and current one, the one near Calexico. Okay. Yeah, I do remember passing by that in February. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's a relatively modern highway. Okay. So, the hours-long video of California Route 11. I'm just kidding. It's only, like, not even two minutes. Minutes. Yeah. I think it's, what is it, about two minutes, something like that? Um, oh. You just started it, and it's about to end. Yeah, yeah, we're going to clear this interchange, and then it's basically going to end right after that. It's one of the easiest state highway clinches in California. When did this uh, all get started up? Because this, I don't think this was around when I was uh, out there. When, Scott, when were you out there again? 13. I think... I think this was in the process of being built at that time. Right, Tom? I think the first phase of 11 opened in 16. I'm looking it up right now. It's very modern. Yeah. You, the, I, if you saw where that truck was parked on the right, there's a stub there. That's where the, the flyover ramp that they're building is going to tie in. It was uh, Current Route 11 was defined in 1994. Four. Um, looks like I'm seeing a lot of 2013s, 2015, 2016. 2016, it was reported construction cruises wrapped up a year long project that will help reduce congestion. Yeah, so kind of around that 2016, 2015 era. Okay, so it didn't exist when I was out there. Yeah, you weren't imagining things, it just didn't exist yet. I know it was on the books, I was being talked about, but uh, that's it. Yeah, but you can see how it'll continue off to the east in a few years. <clears throat> see that? Two minutes. Nice and easy. Continues on and runs right into a wall. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, let's, let's take a look at 805, because we, we did spend a lot of time talking about it. Um, it might be my favorite freeway in the San Diego area, 
and let's check out one of the one of the most interesting parts of it this this video takes us east of San Diego across Mission Valley and up towards um, up towards the five junction <clears throat> We have, what do we got here? We've got five lanes per direction plus an HOV on the far left. Although I think a couple of these lanes are going to leave us shortly. Yes. <clears throat> yeah, 805 is a very pleasant drive. Um, I enjoyed it very much. Is Home Avenue the one you take to go home? Well, I yeah, I guess for some people, right? Apparently so. Well, here comes the ninety-four. Yep, one of one of many giant stacks in San Diego. Now, when we watch the I eight footage next week. Um, it's basically Oops. like one after another for a couple of miles. So these huge stacks that you pass through. It's really quite quite amazing. Um, I don't know if you noticed, but there's points where the shoulder lane cuts out and then a new one comes in right before a ramp. Okay. This is quite common in California, especially in the southern portions. I still, I, I tried researching this, and I don't remember exactly why they have that. Do you, do you know, Tom? I don't, but it's very common across the state. Yeah. Yeah, but California is not as big as Texas when it comes to interchanges. Well, that might be... There true. might be some competition there, though, especially with the judge. Well, California can give Texas a run for its money, that's for sure. Yeah, Texas will probably end up having way more in the future, though, because I think we're well past our prime in freeway development. And California really doesn't have the funding for it. It don't, and there's not the interest either. Like even where it would be the huge benefit is just not not the thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think one of Texas's pastimes now is just building four level stacks. They just do five it level. Fun of it. Yeah. Well, you guys have seen the, um, or at least what they've built so far of the. Um, the I-35 69W interchange north of Laredo. And oh, yeah. it's basically it's a it's a footprint for a four level stack, but they just built these two enormous ramps for a 69W. Um mm -hmm. yeah, it's like this hundred foot high ramp that is just it's there. I mean it's I guess it's serving like three cars a day, but um pieces of pieces of the puzzle. Yeah, I mean, many years from now it'll all be complete, I guess, but they got to start somewhere. I guess that's their mindset. Yeah. <laughs> so here's Mission Valley right here. As we descend towards I-8, we cross the valley on a high-level bridge and then ascend back up the other side. This is one of the best shots of a freeway you'll get in the San Diego area, if you ask me. You wouldn't even know if I ate, was there if it weren't for the signs. No, because we're so high above it at this point. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, I actually had to turn down a job transfer to Mission Valley one time. I just couldn't afford to live there when they got offered a transfer. That killed me because like this area is just beautiful. 
yeah, this this is amazing. Yes. You can't see, obviously, to the left or the, to the right of you, but the views looking to the left and the right down the valley are pretty neat also. <clears throat> Yeah, California still got these ancient overhead gantries in place. I guess they're they're not going anywhere anytime soon either. No, and they're doing like a uh, retro reflective vinyl on a lot of the old uh, button copy ones. Yeah, even before button copy came. So it's interesting. Like if you're on I five eighty, that's where they did a lot of it in the Bay Area. Uh, you'll see like these old button copy background signs that have like a vinyl number or vinyl vinyl street name slapped on them, and they stand out so much because they're so such a lighter shade of green. I noticed that as well in the LA area too. Yeah, there's a couple of those now. Yes, they did something on I five recently of a bunch of sign replacements because. There ended up being a bunch of button copy I-5 shields ended up on eBay a while back. I actually got one of my garages right off to my right at the moment. Is this south of downtown? This should be... This is north of it. Okay. Then I know both of them. Both directions are under construction for lane expansions. Oh, sorry. Yeah, you meant up LA. Yeah, no, the Santa Ana Freeway is like under massive construction right now. Yep. Um, there was a part of it last year they had uh, down to like two lanes and northbound. It's coming up in eight years worth of construction. Yeah, it's going to be almost perpetual. Yeah, there's a lot of construction on the 5. There's a lot of construction on the 405 down by Long Beach. There's never any construction on that 405. <laughs> <laughs> always somewhere. There's always oh. construction somewhere. And unlike uh, L.A., I haven't seen a state flower here on a, any of the interstates yet. The scenic Except... placard? <laughs> Actually, uh, I was talking about the orange barrels. Oh, 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 oh. Outside of outside of eleven nine oh five runs. Uh... I'm actually trying to think if any of the highways in San Diego do, are signed as scenic. I want to say seventy five and one sixty three are. No, I think it's the poppy that's on that little placard that you'll see. Like, uh, yeah, I, that's I, I the true California those. state flower. All the traffic in the middle, is that uh, express lanes? Yeah, so this is the 15 north, and um, we're a bit north of San Diego at this point. And this mm -hmm. is the um, the bi-directional HOT roadways in the middle that you're seeing. Yeah. <clears throat> Again, fast track only. Yep. So they were not open to roadway whiz on this trip. There was something that I can't remember exactly what it was with fast track. It's really not cost efficient unless like you drive these roads every day. I can't remember exactly what it was. I think they have a monthly fee on them. That's what it was. Yeah, so like like for me, like I go to the Bay Area usually like every other month, but I go in off peak traffic time, so there's like no incentive for me to get a fast track. I had thoughts about getting a fast track when I was out there because of uh, wanting to take like the 110 tower, but uh, my mind said, uh, use your better judgment. Yeah. I just wish they would make it easier, like uh, like the Sun Pass in Florida, like you could put money on it and it just sits there. Uh, yeah. Something like that, I'd sign up for it a second, but it's not, unfortunately. They sell, pa they sell Sun Passes like candy. Yeah. In a vending machine. I think they actually do. I think oh, the public should right? get it. Yeah, yeah. I uh, noticed that. I, even though I got my son pass in advance, I noticed they do that. <laughs> yeah, I like all factor. <laughs> I think. Uh, 
Is Sun Pass might be the only uh, toll tag you can buy at a vending machine. Yeah. Because they uh, get so many toll roads in Florida. Well, yeah, you like leave your driveway, you pay a toll in Florida. Yeah, I lived in Orlando for a while. Um, everything except I four. Well, even I four's got toll lanes now, but yeah, yeah. That, I actually lost some employees because they couldn't pay the tolls, like on Florida's Turnpike. But then I got to thinking because uh, I've been dealing with all this out in California for so long. By then, it's like the tolls are relatively cheap compared to most places in the country. Yes, for yeah. what it's worth. Well, oh, yeah. look at that stub. Yeah, yeah. If you That's ever cool. want to complain about the tolls at the Bay Area bridges, come to New York City. Yeah. <laughs> or drive I ninety five like through Maryland and Delaware. There you go. Everyone's yeah. favorite, the Delaware Toll Plaza on ninety five. Yes. Yeah, just uh, get off and go around. Yeah, you know, nice and easy. That might be the Same. single favorite toll plaza of everybody on AA Roads to talk about. Like, there's there's certain things on that forum that, that just cause people to get triggered. And so one of those fun things, fun. I think, is the 95 Plaza in Newark, Delaware. Like, everyone just goes into a, a spontaneous conniption whenever that gets brought up. <laughs> Breezewood. <laughs> uh, That's, yeah, well, actually, I, you know, not, not to open that one up, but I, it's just, I just, I've eaten so many meals there to just like, I almost wouldn't want to have it any other way because it's so weird. And you got that old uh, stub of the turnpike that you can get to right from Breezewood. That's true, yeah. Um, Shondar brought one up. Uh, there was a. There was a stub bridge off the express lane exit that he mentioned that looks like an incomplete bridge. What was that in this video? Yes. Oh, yeah, I wasn't even paying attention. So that's what I do best. I just tune people out and tune stuff out. But uh, I don't know. Like, is there... I mean, the express lanes keep express going for a while, so it's not it's not an it's not like the express lane stub end or anything like that. I don't know if that's like a future crossover ramp or a future interchange or or what that might be. Up in LA, they do a lot of uh, they have exits from those toll lanes that are pretty much you can only access to them from there. Like they'll end up at the same place, the regular exit will, but it could be something like that. <clears throat> the 105-110 interchange. Yes, which I got to experience for the first time in February. However, there was fog, so I couldn't see most of it. But I am told that the view going southbound on 110 is spectacular if there's no fog. It is. Yes. I took it once in daytime going the wrong direction. So when I did uh, the article on Gribble Nation, I went northbound on purpose to go through the tunnels because that was what I wanted the feature was the tunnels, but you get the better view going south. Yep. You're talking about the 110 tunnels up in, uh, by Dodger Stadium? Yeah, Figueroa, the Figueroa Street Tunnels. Yep. yep. That's a neat stretch of highway there. Yeah, it's just gorgeous. Mm -hmm. I got a bunch of photos on Flickr of uh, when I was doing a little tour in L.A. of the uh, U.S. 99, and we actually walked along a walkway. We'll have more of that on that particular webinar, but it's standing on the tunnels. <clears throat> yeah, because I think there's a couple pretty famous photos that are right on top of the tunnels. Like a lot of these ones people are taking right now, like uh, the empty freeways, I think they're taking them from there. At least some of them I've seen. Yeah. Don't cross the double yellow lines. And definitely don't cross the pair of double white lines. Correct. I can't wait to upload my uh, Lincoln Tunnel video from a few weeks ago 
because I'll be uploading some New York City stuff in the coming months. And um, I am just, like, in pure I-don't-give-a-you-know-what mode, and I'm just crossing the double white line all the time. So I can't wait to see <laughs> I what noticed I... that. Oh, yeah, I, I didn't see anything. No, no. What are you, what are you talking about? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, you know. It's New York City. Usually they do have, uh, have little sticks in the middle, don't they? The MTA tunnels have the plastic poles, but the Port Authority tunnels do not. I know the MTA is really strict about that. Yeah. The BBT and the Queens Midtown, I know, had both of both had that. Yes. Yeah, but the Holland and Lincoln do not. Okay. I'm assuming that's just agency preference, but I I would think that you would want to have them especially at the Lincoln and the Holland but I don't know that's Port Authority for you mm. anywho that'll be $16 please yeah. <laughs> gee I don't know if I can afford that is there a turnaround point <laughs> <laughs> yeah too late <laughs> I remember even in the 90s when I was middle school my dad would have me sitting as toll jockey for all that stuff in New York City New Jersey I couldn't believe how much the prices increased when I went back in the late in the 2010s yeah yeah, yeah they, they keep raising it too you know the, the Verrazano Bridge is up to $19 god yeah it's insane so this is 805 at 94, and what's in the middle? An express lane? Bus lane? That is... I guess it's a busway? Yeah. There's a, transit, there's a transit hub right at that location. So, like, one of the light rail lines intersects there. Oh, the trolley. Yeah. I call it the dinky. Is it... What is it? The trolley? Yep. Okay. <laughs> dinky does sound right. Yeah. Well, you know, yes, nineteen dollars for a bridge. Yeah, nineteen dollars yeah. for the Verrazano Bridge. Yep. One way though. Yep. Keep that in mind. You have to drive that every day. It would be awful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, that's the other thing. Like a lot of the bridge toll, the Bridgeton tunnel toll revenue is going straight to the the MTA subway capital program. It's not even going to the bridges. Nope. <clears throat> um, the Verrazano is told going into Staten Island. Yes. So it's not a two way toll. So the but the, the Verrazano is the only Hudson River bridge that gets tolled westbound. Um the Holland, Lincoln, and George Washington Bridge are told eastbound into Manhattan. <clears throat> you gotta pay a toll to escape New Jersey. Yeah. Yeah, it's like going through customs. <laughs> Speaking of customs, um, didn't see anything about this on 805 when I was going through there because I didn't take 805 south uh, down towards the border, but when I took 5 south... You didn't see any recognition of any of the cities in Mexico except for one mileage sign, which had Tijuana uh, and Ensenada on there, along with Rosario Beaches. Hmm. Um, which is, every time you see something close to Mexico, it's always international border. Yeah, with Arizona, India, and other desert cities. It's <laughs> not, yeah! Yeah! <laughs> That is one of uh, the most famous road signs still out there, I think. At least with yeah. road geeks, yeah. You don't see Phoenix until you get 86. And I think that one's new. Yeah. Yeah, because what do uh, they consider to be a desert city in the context of that sign? Blythe, maybe? Uh, <laughs> 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 Blythe is nothing. Quartz is even less. That's, that's yeah. Arizona, so I don't even think that would be technically what they would want to refer to. Was that? I can't remember if that was before or after Palm Springs. Uh, it's right at the turnoff for 111. 
So if you're heading east on I-10, it's right there at that junction. Hmm. And this is where 805 ends. This is, uh, what are we on? This is 15. Oh, I'm sorry. Now, you could really piss people off and say this is where I-15 ends. Yeah. <laughs> and if you're going the other way from the base, you're like, oh, what? Are you wow, sure this is not I-15? It almost misses exit right there. Yeah. There is actually, at this intersection we're coming up to, if you're getting on the freeway going north, there is an I-15 right there. Yeah. Right up the base. Yeah. So you know what? Screw you guys. I'm when I when I title this video, when I upload it this summer, I'll just call it I fifteen and then I'll just have hundreds of comments from angry pitchfork carriers saying it's not I fifteen. <laughs> yeah, it's actually opened up a whole, whole bag of interesting stuff with military signage that's all over the place. Like I've never seen worse signage in any so like maybe like towns in New England. Uh, military bases, they tend to sign things worse than anything else. Yeah. Yeah, I was reading some yeah, stuff about the uh, the San yeah. Diego trolley, and um, that does sound like an interesting little uh, network they have. But I, I never got to... I never got to ride any of it. Like, where all the lines intersect downtown, I, I was able to to catch quite a bit of action with the trains coming in and out. So it, it looks like a pretty looks neat like system, but I never did get to ride any of it. <clears throat> um, so we have graduated to the five freeway south, and that's what we're on right now. We just passed the interchange for I-8. And the skyline of downtown San Diego is up ahead. I've always assumed that one of the big reasons why there aren't any really tall buildings in San Diego, because you see how all the buildings kind of get up to a certain height and then they just end. But um, I always assumed that that had a lot to do with the proximity of the airport. Yeah, there's, um, I think in the uh, article I did on I-5 in the San Diego area, I got a photo of a plane like right about here. Like it's maybe a couple hundred feet above the roadway. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, uh, that airport yep. is like right on top of downtown. Yeah. Yep. Duck. <laughs> and that's that's literally the flight path as you're approaching, right? Yes. I mean, that's like normal. Yeah, it was. I think it was rated like one of the top five scariest takeoffs in the United States. Yeah, because I mean, if you miss on the one side, you've got a hill, and on the other side, you've got buildings. You know, that's that's a tight space to navigate. <clears throat> But yeah, Honolulu skyline is a lot like this. Hey, there's a plane for you right there. But yeah, like you're the plane's like right next to downtown, and it's a couple hundred feet above the freeway. Mm -hmm. um, the skyline in Honolulu reminds me a lot of this one. Again, it's a lot of it's a lot of buildings, but they're not very tall because they're right in the way of the flight path or one of the flight paths for the airport. Phoenix does that actually actually a little bit too. Uh, they were going to put the uh, stadium for the Cardinals in downtown originally, but the the airport's the one that raised the fuss. Uh, that's why I ended up getting the move to Glendale. So you're flying into Phoenix from an eastbound flight, or even sometimes westbound, they'll fly right over uh, whatever they call Bank One Ballpark. You yeah. literally get to see it right outside your wing. Your wing. Chase Field. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. When I when I did that flight, I came in from the east, and we kind of did a loop around downtown, and we came you know, like within a couple blocks of flying over Chase Field. But uh, yeah, like the flight path as you're coming in is right off of downtown there. <clears throat> this is a very cool uh, urban drive. Yeah, this was a nice view too. Yeah. Bridge, 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 bridge. Yeah. 
lot of tight curves here as we loop around the north and the east side of the downtown center. <clears throat> Look, uh, sorry. And there's this is the 163 stack that we're yes. passing through on the top level. And then we have the split for the 94 as we transition to the east side of downtown. <laughs> Here's a question that Tom probably knows the answer to. What's the longest elevated highway in California? I saw that and I actually don't know. <laughs> I gotta imagine it probably was something in the Bay Area that's probably not around anymore. Isn't it not El Centro's uh, 805? I'm actually kind of surprised I don't know that. Well... I'm not sure. Well, I guess what are we defining as an elevated highway? That would be my first question. I guess we're not including bridges, right? Yeah. Um, so that eliminates San Mateo. Um, the old Nimitz structure through Oakland must have been pretty lengthy, right? Yeah, that was pretty big. So, like, most of that elevated stuff is gone now. Yeah. Where it was replaced. Oh. Have you heard of the Yolo Causeway? You should have. You're up there. Yeah. Yeah. That is a long elevated highway. Oh, the yeah. Yolo on 80. Yes. Okay. Yes, that, that is pretty long. Yep. I remember taking that when I was in San, the Sacramento area. Lots of lots of rhythmic bumps. Yeah, yeah, that's a pretty yes. long one. Yeah, yeah, that can that can compete with the Louisiana Louisiana bridges, or not? You got some long well, ones. Well, yeah, it can compete with it in terms of its you know design and feel for sure. I mean, that's basically but not the same length. kind of bridge. But not length. That oh, whole no, area yeah. is really unique with, um, you know, the Delta up there. It's like something you'd see in the southeast United States. Exactly. Like levees, canals, everything. Yeah. Um, we have one more order of business as far as videos are concerned, and that is the Coronado Bridge. So let's, let's give you guys a couple videos of that uh, before we sign off for the evening. I was actually hit by a car at the intersection on the right, right there, in 2010. Really? Yeah, I was out for a run. The person ran the stop sign. See, like, all those people making the left-hand turn? They were trying to get across. Saw the clearing and the traffic. Jeez. Yeah, I'll just take it. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, they, they were clear of traffic. Just problem was somebody was in the intersection <laughs> on foot. <laughs> Coronado Bay Bridge. That was the old uh, <clears throat> toll plaza structure we passed under. Yeah. At least they cleared all the boots out of there. Not like, un not unlike the Golden Gate. Yeah, where the the toll equipment is still at the booths. Yes. So you're, ba you're there's still, your yeah you're still driving through the booths at thirty miles an hour. Yeah, yeah, people still stop on the Golden Gate Bridge at those, and they got a guy that will like yell at you on a loudspeaker to move. Keep going. <laughs> There's your zipper lane bar barrier. Yeah. So we're eastbound or inbound to San Diego, and there's three lanes open in that direction at the time of this video. San Diego City Limit. <clears throat> city Limit. Population, you. It's just me. I'm the only show in town. Exactly. I'm the only person worth passing through. This is a pretty tall bridge. I think the clearance on it is about 180 feet. And we get to that height on about a 5% five to five percent grade in each on each approach. <clears throat> Get off the bridge right into an interchange. Yeah, this is 
here's the five freeway, and I I like these signs right here, especially the one on the right. You can tell that's original from the seventies. Yep. As we round this bend to join the five northbound, you get another nice view of downtown. <clears throat> I was kind of upset my photos got all screwed up because it was overcast the day I was leaving San Diego the last time, so I had to crop it and cut out a lot of the downtown. Huh. Oh, that's one of the best views I've ever seen. Yeah, it's really nice. Yeah. Oh, that's a quick lane drop. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for coming. Now get the hell out of this lane. <laughs> Zoo museums. It reminds me of a sign on the eastbound on the 40 um, from Barstow. Another lane reduction right there. Yep. <laughs> that... Uh, had a sign that said phone water on a, on a rest area. <laughs> well, um, <laughs> I mean, I this might this is just my opinion, but something tells me you shouldn't mix the two. Exactly. <laughs> but the way it was the way it was written just makes you wonder how you can read it. Yeah, yeah. I, I think the rest areas in Arizona had similar signage. But, um, yeah, I think that was the first time when I was driving either on 8 or 10, and I was seeing signage for the rest areas, and they made sure to tell you on the signage that they had water available. And <coughs> I, I, you know, I'm from the Northeast. I don't know jack about driving through the deserts, right? So um, it never occurred never to me heard. that you would ever see something like that on a sign. Yeah, that stretch of I-10 in Arizona is pretty interesting. It's uh, what do you do if there's a big accident? You're actually found that is well, no, you you got to drive off the road uh, if you get past Vicksburg Road. Um, especially around if you if you can't get to Salome Highway, you're pretty much hosed. Either you got to find a place to turn around, uh, you do a U-turn in the freeway, because you're stuck. Yeah, and they do have their share of big wrecks on that stretch of 10, especially from Casa Grande on up through uh, Chandler. Yeah, even uh, west of the city, too. Uh, you get that, a lot of big wrecks up big wreck that way. A stretch of 10 that's only four lane, but really should be six or eight, even eight lane. Yep. Yeah, that's the last stretch of four lane between Phoenix and Tucson. Yep. Yeah, that's... Uh, Interesting story there with just a lot of the agreements the state didn't make with the tribe and how that's not going well. You know, sometimes it really pays to have foresight. Yeah, the reason I was taking this exit was because the next video that I filmed was the San Diego airport stuff but uh that's why i was taking that exit um well folks we got our last video of the evening if you want to chase a taxi that's the one to chase yeah i guess right <laughs> see now you guys really want to watch that san diego airport video yeah watch me run down a a Prius taxi. Uh, so this is the bridge back from San Diego to Coronado. We have, again, now we're going in the other direction, so we'll have only two lanes open, as that sign graciously tells us. Um, and again, there's some fantastic views in the San Diego area, one of which is not visible in this shot, but if you were to pan to the right at this point... Uh, you would get a fantastic view of the bay and uh, downtown San Diego. Not sure if I want to pan right while driving. Well, no, I wouldn't. Like <laughs> a good either. chance of being enough traffic that you can, yeah. especially if you're parking lot mode. 
Yeah, especially if you're one of the military guys heading at 9 in the morning. It's a parking lot. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah, because this drops down uh, pretty quickly to just the surface street, and 75 takes like a, just a massive left-hand turn. Uh, if you, continue, you continue straight on to Highway 282. Yeah, I got a little confused when I was uh, trying to clinch the both of them. Yeah, the interesting thing is, I guess with 282, they're considering building the tunnel under 75 to connect directly to the bridge to alleviate the traffic. Ooh. Yeah, cool. I, I don't even know how that would work. Yeah. That sounds complicated. Yeah. Uh, tunneling and flooding. Bad combinations. Yep. At sea level. Yeah, I think one of the iterations for the bridge before they built it was to build a tunnel. Yes. But uh, That would be the Navy's favorite. Well, the Navy loves tunnels, right? Yep, just ask Virginia. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> I... I, t- I f- I-564 basically is dedicated completely to two military bases. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's why it's there, right? And the Chesapeake Bay Bridge Tunnel, the Monitor Merrimack. The problem you got with San Diego Bay is it's really shallow. Yep. I got a dredge to get a lot of those um, naval ships out of there. Yep. Yeah, welcome to Coronado, and welcome to the end of this video, and folks, I think we've come to the end of the video section of the presentation, so um, I'm going to be wrapping this up in a few minutes. Um, Scott, Tom, any closing thoughts from uh, San Diego in general, or any last minute uh grievances you wish to air not for me i think you hit everything that was major major i'd say the same thing it's worth a trip out here if you want to get the chance and it's and it's safe well yeah yeah please mm-hmm. uh please practice social distancing in the meantime but uh again i, I highly recommend san diego as a city to visit um yeah, it's really, it's really spectacular. But um, I think we're gonna, I think we're gonna wrap it up here for the night. Thanks to Scott, you know, you did great. Mm-hmm. Thanks to Tom, it's great to have you. Um, <clears throat> thanks for all your help with San Diego and helping us navigate all that stuff. Uh, you were a big help. You're welcome. Um, You're welcome. Before I go, we have. Let me just make a quick announcement here. Um, so this was the San Diego webinar, which we're wrapping up. Tomorrow is Sunday. We will have another interview Sunday conversation for you guys. Because um, you guys are really digging the interviews right now. So we'll keep that going. We'll, we'll do another one of those tomorrow. And then the cycle will begin anew once again on Monday. So... Um, oh, and I was telling a few people this, um, off camera, and I will let you guys know this, you guys will be the first to hear this. The state of New York has extended the stay home order due to COVID-19 through May 15th, which means that I am going to be continuing the daily afternoon live, uh, streaming of my afternoon commute through at least May 22nd. Okay. So you will continue to get uh, the daily content out of me until at least that point. And then obviously as things continue to evolve in New York and other parts of the country, I will uh, be reassessing uh, what the future uh, holds for that feature but for now you can expect that to go on for another few weeks at least okay so 
that's tonight's presentation. We look forward to you joining us again tomorrow night for our special interview. And we'll see you guys again, hopefully on a daily basis or close to it um, in the days ahead. So thanks again to Tom and Scott. And from all of us here at Roadway Wiz, thank you very much for joining us. And we'll see you again real soon.